What do I got? Oh, nothing till one. I disagree with you. And I hate you. And that's what you do when you have time in your calendar. Five keys to a fresh start mindset. How many people in this room feel like at times they need, to, they need a fresh start? Matt, it's okay to want a fresh start. I want a fresh start all the time. There's sometimes I wake up Monday morning after a subpar week, Curtis, and I say, you know, I need a fresh start. I'm in a little bit of a funk. But I think a lot of people, they don't know how to have a fresh start. And maybe it's because they don't know how to let go, or maybe it's because they don't know how to move forward. But I'm telling you, there's a few things that I want to help you with around the mindset of having a fresh start. Because I find a lot of people get stuck in the same patterns. A lot of people get, st get stuck in the same cycle. Anybody know anybody that's kind of experiencing the same things that they were experiencing a year ago, or two years ago, and three years ago? And for some reason, they just keep getting the same results, same results, same results. It's because they're doing the same things over and over again. They're like, I don't know what it is. I got a new relationship. I changed my job. I changed my Facebook profile. I started swiping more right on Tinder. I mean, I just assumed that I'd be a different person, but it's actually, the reason they're not is because it's a mindset. It's a mindset. People think, oh, it's so complicated, and I didn't come for the right side of the tracks. No, you just gotta work on your mindset. So I have five things that, that and one of them Guy covered. Great duplication when when, when one of your top junior brokers says one of the same things you're gonna say, but I want you to write the first one down. Everything's easier when you're thinking big. I want you to have the mindset of everything's easier when you're thinking big, everything. See, the further that you can see, the faster you're gonna go. The further you can see, the faster you're gonna go. You know, Ed Milet always said this, he said, listen, your habits and your behaviors are a reflection of your vision and your standard. Your habits and your behaviors are a reflection of your vision and your standards. What do I mean by that? You know, people always say, man, I gotta get my habits on track. I have to get my habits on track. I need better habits. It's not a habit problem, it's a standard problem. When the standard's so low, you don't need habits. Does that make sense? When there's no vision, you don't need to change your habits. When you can't see past October, or you can't see yourself here past November, why do you need to change your habits? Why do you need to be consistent? It, you're gonna have a really hard time starting over if you don't understand that this time now, that moving forward, starting now, you gotta start to think bigger than you've ever thought. It's the way it goes, so what happens when you start thinking bigger? Everything. Your team starts growing faster. You get better referrals. Why would you get better referrals when you increase your vision? Because you know what you're trying to build. So when you know what it's supposed to look like, you start to see the kinds of people that you think would be a fit to fulfill that vision. Does that make sense? But when you have no vision, and you're not thinking big at all, all you're thinking about is Friday or your next paycheck, you're, you're, you have no idea what you're trying to build, you're gonna, you're gonna get subpar referrals, you're gonna get subpar teammates. When you're thinking bigger, calls get easier it's easier to make a call because you're thinking better. You're thinking different. You're thinking bigger. You know, I used to have a, a slogan on top of my whiteboard and it said, stay in the big. It said, stay in the big. And it was a time in the business where I was struggling a bit with my mindset. And I'd have it right there at the top, stay in the big, stay in the big. And when things went wrong or a teammate quit or a client canceled, Maybe my forehead hit the counter a couple times when no one was looking. I'm not going to lie. I had a few of those. Right? Anybody have one, ever one of these days where you're just like, oh. A couple of those, door shut. Right? Pull my eyes back up. Stay in the big. When you're thinking bigger, everything, everything feels a little bit easier. And the opposite's true when you're thinking small. But here's the reality is that we've been conditioned to think small our whole life. I sat down with this girl the other day, a week or so ago. Her name was... We'll call her Sarah. I don't want to expose her name. And I said, Sarah, if, if time and money were of no object here, how much money do you think you, you would want to earn? She's like, oh, man. Oh, 
That's a great question. Her eyes look like way up, right? Activating the, the visionary part of her brain. She goes, man, time and money, no object. I'm like, yeah, she's like, huh, I'd want to make $1,500 a month here. And I was like, okay. She's like, well, is that too much? I'm like, no, no, but that's, that's a typical answer. I'm like, I want to make 20 grand a year. I'll make 30 grand a year. That's because that's what she thinks she's worth. That's because her entire life, that's what somebody's been telling her that she's worth. That's, she got paid in her first job. It led to the second job. She took some schooling, went back into debt, tried to get a job, got laid off. 100 people applying for the next job, working for less money than she's actually worth because it's not hard to find people. It's crazy. It's crazy. Time and money were no object. What would you want to see for yourself in this business? I want, I'd want, oh, whew, 1,500 a month. And my heart sunk a little bit. And I felt, you know what? That, there's a lot of that out there right now, isn't there? People aren't thinking big at all. And not only that, but with all the scarcity mindset and on social media and the media, people are just, man, it's doom and gloom. And when you're thinking small already, people are more stuck now than they've ever been. The second thing I want you to write down is this. Never get tired of teaching the fundamentals. Never get tired of teaching the fundamentals. There's an old football coach. You guys have heard of him. His name is Vince Lombardi. He's a Hall of Fame coach. Hall of Fame coach who was hired by the Green Bay Packers. And training cap, 1961. These are professional athletes, 1961. First thing he says in training camp, he holds up the football. He goes, gentlemen, this is a football. These are professional athletes that were drafted and that are in the NFL, some of them coming off a championship, but it's always about the fundamentals. See, this is about saying the same thing to new people. Look, success is redundant. Success is consistent. Success leaves clues. Different businesses have different fundamentals, by the way. For, you, for, for everybody sitting in this room and on Zoom right now, on Zoom, I see you on Zoom, the fundamentals are how to make a call, how to promote yourself on social media, how to close a prospect, how to, how to help a client with their decision to move forward with their plan, teaching our core values. These are the fundamentals that you need to learn. The other day I was in a, I was in a class learning, learning about communication and they talked about how lecture learning, like you sitting in the crowd right now, lecture learning is 10% effective. 10%. 90% is learned through practicing, drilling, and rehearsing. 90% is learned from practicing and doing. 10% from listening to somebody talk. So that's why when I ask you to take notes, I want you to take notes, and then I want you to go and practice some, put some of this stuff into practice. Because if you're not practicing your craft, you're gonna end up in the same spot you were a year ago, right? Are you better today? Are you talking about the fundamentals? Are you training on the fundamentals? I hope you're not trying to win the Academy Award of presentations. You don't need to be the Academy Award winner. You don't need to be the unicorn of all presentations. You need a good, solid presentation, fundamentally sound, and then you need to, right? Once you get fundamentally sound, you gotta get in front of more people. I'm gonna repeat that. Once you become fundamentally sound, you become a weapon in your business, a tool in your, in your business. Now you just gotta go talk to more people. But if you're not fundamentally sound, if you're not your best asset, if you're not your secret weapon, you say, Steve, what's your, what's, your, what's your secret weapon in your business? You wanna know what it is, Jay? It's me. I'm my secret weapon. What's your secret weapon? Now, you don't need to be me because you have me. I'm a tool, not a, not a tool. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta start changing that word tool. Maybe I, I'm a utensil, right? <laughs> I don't know, but you get it. I'm a tool in your tool belt. You don't need to be me, you already have me. But if you aren't practicing your craft, getting good at the fundamentals, I'm not sure what you expect. We were at hockey practice last week. Mason's part of a great program. Unbelievable, great kids, great parents. And my wife had a great conversation with the coach. And the coach just said, listen, like right now, you know, there's other kids on the team that are more fundamentally sound. 
And that was great feedback. And when we asked him what the difference was between a kid that was at the next level versus not the next level, he said, the kids that are at the next level have their puck on their stick around the clock. Around the clock, meaning outside of ice times, they got their puck on the stick, they're taking shots. Same as football. You're taking passes, you're taking snaps, you're, you know, you're, you're receiving throws. It's, it's not what you do on the field, it's what you do off the field when, when nobody's watching. It's, it's so boring and it's so redundant, but it, 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 it's so success. It's so success. Fun, the, practicing the fundamentals is not always sexy, it's not always glamorous, it's not always gonna fit your perfect Instagram post, right? But it is very effective. The third thing I want you to write down is this. Obsession with your calendar. Obsession with your calendar. Your mindset needs to be, I am obsessed with my calendar. You should have a relationship with your calendar. <laughs> if you're gonna have an affair, have an affair with your calendar. <laughs> Not with somebody actually. <laughs> you should be obsessed with your calendar. If you show me somebody's calendar over the last three to six to nine months, I'll tell you how much money they're making, I'll tell you what their relationship is like, I'll tell you, I'll tell you if they're a spiritual being, and I'll also tell you what their self-care is like. And by looking at their self-care, I'll, I'll tell you where their mindset's at. And I'll tell you if it's somebody on the move or somebody that's going out the back door. Your calendar speaks everything. There's just two rules. Rule one is everything goes in your calendar. And rule two is you do everything in your calendar. Wait a minute, what, what was the secret again, Steve? Yeah, everything goes in your calendar and you do everything that is in your calendar. White space should drive you crazy in your calendar. If you have a bunch of two or three hour slots where there's nothing booked, you are scatterbrained, you're inefficient, you're, you're, you're doing a lot of things, not getting the results that you want, you're just not efficient, you're burning fuel, way too much fuel. You're making this look hard, harder than it needs to be. You can't have a two or three hour slot in your day where there's nothing to account, be accounted for. Not if you have kids or uh, a life or want to make a life or you want to build something. Does that make sense? Yeah. You cannot burn three hours of a day in a 16 hour waking day and expect to be successful. I mean, Jeff Bezos is worth $225 billion, maybe more this week, quarter trillion dollars. Last time I checked, he has 24 hours in a day. Something he was doing during those 24 hour period when nobody was watching, he was just outworking other people. And he, got, he, got, he obviously had a good idea. But you gotta be obsessed. So people say, well Steve, listen, where do I start? Well, I'm gonna tell you where to start with your calendar, okay? Because listen, it should drive you absolutely crazy when you look back on your week and you've been doing a bunch of things that are not in line with your purpose. I'm gonna give you guys a gift that was given to me 10 years ago. Here's what I did. I took everything out of my calendar, blank slate. So I had the calendar that Guy showed you, I deleted everything. And then on a white sheet of paper, I wrote down all the things that I must be present for. Musts. I got kids. I must be a dad. <laughs> I'm a husband. I must spend time with my wife. If I wanna have a wife, I have to spend, we have to spend time together, that's the way it works. And I enjoy her too, which is always a bonus. <laughs> If you take everything out of your calendar and you make a list of all the things that are deadly important to you, your faith, your family, date night, spend time with your kids, physical activity, meditation. For me, I book, I book three to four hours a week, time with myself every week, just me. I love Thursdays. Every Thursday, I take four hours, just me, just me. In the summer, I used to go out of town and lay in the grass for literally four hours. That's when I came up with all my best ideas. But everything is on purpose with purpose. Everything's on purpose with purpose. Hey Steve, could I have 15 minutes of your time? Hey Steve, can you speak on my call? Hey Steve, I've been following you on social media. Can you do a, can you do a Zoom call for our team? Listen, part of, part of my purpose is to give. I, I'll, I give, 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 give. But you know what I had to learn the last year is how to say no. I had a really hard time saying no. 
I said yes to everything. When COVID hit, I said yes to everything. I was doing, I mean, I was doing three or four Zoom calls a day for other teams. I was burning the midnight oil. And then I pulled my head up one day and I said, man, is, is really doing all of this stuff in line with my purpose? And I got away from my purpose. I was doing it, I was doing it because I, I liked the sound of my voice. I was doing it because I was doing it to do it. I would just do it. I was doing it because I had a hard time saying no. So I took that stuff out. You take everything out and then you put it back in piece by piece and you literally kind of pick it up, right? Not actually, because you can't, but you pick it up and you go, okay, a must. Physical activity is in line with me being in the best shape of my life by 40. That goes in my calendar. Next. Oh. Time with my two daughters. Yeah. That's got to be in there. That goes in there. Oh, date night with my wife. Yeah, this is going to be a hot one, right? <laughs> it's going to be a steamy night. Boom, put it in the calendar. Hey, hon, booked us a date night four hours next Friday. Then we know. Then we know we got date night coming up. And every day, hey, can't wait for date night, right? Hey, can't wait for date night, fired up. Hey, closed 5,000 points, right? Hey, brought on two new teammates, can't wait for date night. Hey, hon, how are you doing? Good, working late. I'll be home at 11 tonight. Oh, okay, great, have fun. Hey, can't wait for date night. Or do you just try and like find time in your white space? The goal is no white space, no white space, none. Even if it means 30 minute meditation, even if it means two hour break, even if it means one hour just catching up on emails, phones, and text messages. Even if it's an hour and a half of walking around the office. You, 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 can't, you can't, the problem with white space is that we're emotional creatures and you can't trust yourself enough. You can't trust yourself enough to be in the right mood to do what you need to do with white space. Like if your day consists of you wake up, you go, well, I should make five calls. I should call my teammates. I should be on six meetings this week. And that's your, that's your goal for the day. You're not going to do any of that stuff. Or if you do it, you'll do it half ass. You got to set the expectation. So you build up, you, look, you, you get a vision of what you want your life to start to look like. You back engineer it. You put everything important in your calendar and you do everything in your calendar. Well, Steve, I'm, I'm burned out. Well, let me see your calendar. There's not enough. There's not enough personal time in there. It's all work. It's 16 hours a day of work. I'd be burnt out too. Where's your personal development time? Where's your physical fitness time? Well, I just, sometimes I just feel like crying. Well then schedule time to cry. <laughs> Hour and a half, Friday afternoon, cry. <laughs> Call Steve, then cry. <clears throat> Hopefully not because of me, right? So number three was obsession with your calendar. That's a mindset. Obsession is a good thing if it's applied to the right thing. It can be a terrible thing, but it can also be a great thing. All right. Number four, the next step mentality. The next step mentality. I want you to become a dog on a bone for the next domino. The next domino. What do I mean by that? I mean, look, Let's say you set a six month goal. You want to save $50,000 or you want to make an extra, you know, $150,000. Whatever your goal is, pay off 40 grand in consumer debt. You set that goal. And then you start to back engineer it. You go, okay, if I want to make that kind of money, I got to be at this kind of contract level. I got to be helping this many families. You got to figure out what's the next thing you need to do that'll knock over the next domino. See, in the game of dominoes, I'm not, a, I'm not an avid domino player. What I know about dominoes is you push one over and they all fall down. That's the extent that I know of the game. But I love that game. That's my kind of game. You're telling me I got to find the first piece and I got to get some kind of a momentum, either like blowing it over or flicking it over. And you're telling me everything else goes from there? Yeah. Perfect. So you need to know what it's going to look like or needs to look like. And then you back engineer it and you go, man, okay, if I, just, if I just did this next, I just did this next, this would knock everything else over. Here's what most people do. They're, they're, they have no real clear vision. They're not practicing the fundamentals. They're not efficient with their calendar. And they have no idea what the next step is. They're, hey, what's the next step? They list off 25 things. And I get anxiety listening to people tell me what they're focused on. I feel like I could order some skip the dish in the time that they're telling me all the things they're focusing on. 25 minutes later, 45 minutes later. I'm like, I just asked you what the next thing you're focusing on. 
And think to yourself in this room, what's your next obsession? The one thing, you, you get that done, everything else falls over. And if you're in this business, you probably need to ask somebody that's training you and you need to have faith in that. Here's where people go wrong. They get coaching and mentorship on what that next domino is and they, they decide on their own that that's not the domino. And they're, they're setting up a completely different track. Why would I listen to somebody that's had success? Why would I listen to somebody that has financial incentive to see me win? Well, because it makes sense. Success leaves clues. I'm a product of going from domino to domino. Domino to domino. Yeah, when I was in SMD, did I dream about making a million bucks a year? Yeah, every single day. But I knew if I was gonna make a million dollars a year, I needed to build this size of a team. To build this size of a team, I had to become this kind of person. To become this kind of person, I needed this much experience and mentorship and growth and failure and hard work and sweat so that when I was knocking over the little dominoes and I was getting tired and I was scared and I was fearful and I was wondering if business was ever gonna take off, anybody ever feel like that? You wake up every morning, you take a look at what the finished product is gonna look like, you spend 30 minutes meditating, visualizing, oh man, back engineered, and then you go, okay, today, I'm just gonna do this. This is the thing I'm gonna to do today. And now you know why you're doing it. You're not like, why am I, why, why am I making calls again? What? what? What do we even do here? Like, what, what's this business? I don't know, like, I don't know if, I don't know if it's my passion. Your passion? Like, what part of being an entrepreneur in this environment around leadership, one of the highest paying industries, one of those noble industries, the residual component to our business, what part of that isn't for you? Oh yeah, yeah, you know what? It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that. It's just that you lack vision and you have no idea even where to go next. Too scattered. I'm not smart enough to figure this thing out without a step-by-step -step plan. I'm not. I was a 59% high school average and I'm proud of that. <laughs> yeah, I graduated from university barely, but you know what? It is what it is. You tell me what to do, Brady. You tell me what to do next. If I trust you, I'm gonna do it. And that's, all, that's what you need. And the last thing I wanna talk about is this, number five. The less you take personally, the faster you fly. The less you take personally, the faster you're gonna fly. Look, if you wanna be a leader, if you wanna be the go-to in your life, in your family, you have, to for, you have to forfeit a few rights. One of them is you need to forfeit the right of feeling sorry for yourself. You are not allowed to feel sorry for yourself. How do you have time to feel sorry for yourself? I have three kids. I don't, I don't allow myself space in my calendar to feel sorry for myself. I don't even know what that feels like. But Steve, you, you lost eight feet of bowel. Like you have no rectum. You, you, all your colon is gone. Like you've been fighting for your life at times since you were two years old. What do you mean you don't feel sorry for yourself? What a wasted emotion. It, it, it's, not that I, it's not that I don't want to feel sorry for myself, because I think I do when I think about it. It kind of sounds fun for a while, for a bit. Like, you know, self-medicating my loathing and victim mindset. It sounds like a kind of a cool party to be at, a little pity party for one. But at the end of the day, I don't have time to feel sorry for myself. There's no time. There's no time. This isn't about me. This is about everybody else. This is about all the people that I want to influence. This is about, this is about all the people that I want to help. I wanna help Cindy get to where she needs to go. How dare I spend five minutes every day feeling sorry for myself when she's not where she needs to be? What kind of a leader is that? Everybody wants the big life. Everybody wants the big income. But they make four calls, they set up two appointments, both no show, and they're like, oh man, it's a sign. <laughs> Let me go flip a card. Yeah, it's a sign, it's not for me. I disagree. I disagree. Look, here's the reality. We all have problems. Nobody really cares about your problem. I'll repeat that. It's not that they don't care. They care. But the second that you're done telling them about your problems, the only thing they're thinking about is their problems. It's not that, it's not that they don't care about you. It's just that everybody's got shit going on. It's amazing how many people tell other people about all the stuff that's going on. They tell it in a way like other people are supposed to really care.
everybody's got their own problems. You're going to get a no. You're going to get a no show. You're going to get some criticism. You're going to get a coaching conversation from somebody mentoring you that you're not going to love. You have to be very careful how you react to that. Very careful. You don't have time to take things personally. You don't have time to be offended all the time with everything. That's just throwing you off track. When you look at your calendar, you have your purpose, your vision, things that are important. You run a tight calendar and then some crap pops up on your Facebook feed. You just got to really look at it and go, is this really, is me engaging in this really in line with my purpose? And if it is, then you should get all up in that. <laughs> get all fired up about it. Seriously. Like if you're deep into the trenches of, you know, some serious issues going on and that's like your purpose and you, you're coming from a good place and that's your business and the, you're, you're putting food on your, on, your par, on your parents' table because of your vision into that purpose. Yeah, you should be all over that. But if you're not running a business in that realm and you're gonna allow a post to get you triggered emotionally and you're off in a la-la land because you can be because you have two hours in your, in your schedule, you're like, what do I got? Oh, nothing till one. I disagree with you and I hate you and that's what you do when you have time in your calendar you just go off into little little la la land and you're like I just feel terrible about myself you're like I feel dirty and gross why did I do that well you feel I mean you feel actually subconsciously more gross that you wasted two hours of your time where you could have been earning money in engaging in, into a battle that you're never going to win I want to lead an entire team of straight couples. I want to lead an entire team of gay couples. I want to lead, an ent I want to lead a team of all, all people, all beliefs. So you got to be very careful what you engage with, what you let your mindset uh, to be triggered by. The less you take personally, the faster that you're going to fly. You know, Dean Graziosi said we, we, uh, we were at an event, a lunch event uh, with Ed Milet and Andy Frisella. And Dean Graziosi, I swear to God, he looked right at me in the eye when he said this. He said, you know what your problem is? He says, you need bigger problems. He says, none of you in this room have big enough problems. And I went home and I started praying for bigger problems. And what happened? Man, you know what happens when you pray for bigger problems? Your capacity to handle those problems increases. It's just like your capacity in your life and your business. You have a certain capacity right now to handle the problems that you think you have. You increase that lid, you increase your capacity, you get bigger problems, you overcome them, you look back and you go, that wasn't such a big problem. I remember when I started, I, I had you know, one licensed agent quit. Man, I, I, whew, that was a sad time for me, man. A lot of warm baths and a lot of, <laughs> lot of, lot of music with the saxophone and <laughs> bottles of red wine. And you think I went in the witness protection program and, you know, dear diary, Sammy quit today. <sighs> Not sure how I'm going to recover. And you get to a point where you build, where you, you get seasoned in business, your capacity increases and you lose senior brokers. And you're like, huh, on to the next one. Doesn't bother you, doesn't phase you. But when you're brand new, the idea of having a senior broker in your team quit, you're like, <gasps> you're like paper bag, because it freaks you out. So remember, the less you take personally, the faster you're gonna fly. So I'll, end, I'll, I'll close on this. How are we doing for time, Guy? We're, we gotta wrap up right now. Listen, a fresh start requires you to have a proper mindset. A fresh start requires you to have a proper mindset. Without a proper mindset, again, you're going to end up in the same spot, repeating the same cycle over and over and over again. And you could literally come back here a year from now, you can hear the exact same class and be in the exact same spot. The only difference is you'll be a year older. And eventually the clock runs out. Eventually the bus stops and everybody has to get off and you don't know when that's going to be, but the bus is going to stop for everybody in this room. The question is going to be, where are you going to be when the bus stops? Can you do more with your time? Can you think better? Can you think bigger? Can you be more consistent? Those are the things that I think about. And, and then you got to give yourself the flexibility to be imperfect. You're not going to be perfect at this. I'm not perfect at this. This calendar stuff, I'm not 100% at it either. But if you can be 80 to 90% efficient with your calendar, you will do more in a week than you used to do in three or four months. More in a week than you used to do in three or four months. A couple weeks ago, I did like 37 unit appointments. 
man, I probably didn't do 37 appointments my first six months in the business. And then I did it in a week. What happened? Just over time, the game changed. It got more efficient. I got clearer on what I wanted. I cut out all the crap. I cut all, all the BS. All the white space became space that I was productive. And then we started getting results. So anyways, I appreciate you guys being here. This has more to do with your mindset than your actually ability to do the business. You do need to increase your ability to do the business, but it all starts with your mindset and that's gonna carry you through, so. You guys good? Okay guys, I appreciate you guys, have an awesome night. Thanks so much.